Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Uh, here I have a 386 motherboard with an onboard CPU. So the problem with this board is that it's uh, Varta battery damaged, so it's a lot of corrosion. I don't know if the board actually worked, it's tested, I'm pretty sure it's dead. And even if, the, even if the post, it probably has issues with the AT connector for the keyboard. They usually all, always, the, the traces usually always corrode off on those when uh, the beta goes. And usually some traces for the BIOS. So most likely, likely it doesn't post. And if it did, we still need to fix this. So we can clearly here see the corrosion on these traces here. We also have uh, a blown up cap here. It's uh, split in two, and uh, yeah, here on the back we have the 12 volts here, negative 12 volts, and there's also a lot of corrosion both on this side and uh, the other side here. Let's see, on the other side here. So if that really actually goes somewhere, and then still I don't know. So what what I usually have to do in a case like this, I have to remove this one to check the traces underneath and do any repairs. Remove this one too to check for damage and repairs and we probably have to remove the socket for the ship. So the bias ship and there's another ship under it. Uh, we can see here so worst case we have to remove that too. So yeah I'm gonna strip it so we can actually get to the PCB and uh, do trace repair. So I'm gonna do the usual Edison tin, some leather one, leather tin here to all the solder joints because they're corroded. So this makes it easier to remove them. I'm gonna have to clean this AT connector in a way. A lot of corrosion on the yeah, on it on the back here over here. There's a lot of corrosion here and so on, so it's gonna need a clean anyway. So better take it off. Tight fit, but there. Yeah. This one needs cleaning, but that's not the big issue right now. I'll clean it before I put it on.
much left of that one. Going to remove this uh, CMOS uh, ship here because there is corrosion in the socket, so that's probably going to have to be replaced. And probably clean the pins on the ship too. A little bit stuck in there, not on the gunk. And I don't want to rip the legs or anything. So slow steady. The ship, the ship actually looks uh, very good, so should be fine to put back. But the socket do need replacing because this also traced one of the big ones are going under here. So even if it was fine, the trace needs inspecting all the other traces. So. Wondering if this is the right one, and it seems to be the right one. So. We're in luck here that I have two of those. So we don't really have to care too much about the socket. We're just gonna remove the pins one by one. And you can either, what I used to do is you can actually unfold them. Stick something sharp in and unfold them and disarm them one by one. And when you get the last one out, you have the frame out. So instead of trying to like take pin, take get all the pins loose and then lift it because you don't care about saving socket. And even if it was, was fine, socket is like, nothing in comparison to like trying to fix the PCB so better to remove that uh, to destroy the socket and save the PCB advantage with this method is that you only need a soldering iron and uh, be able to do well corrode it off or something you only need to be able to solder one pin at a time this other one so you don't need much of any skill doing the, this way with the sockets that's also why i like to socket everything if i if i have to remove a ship or something because then i don't need to deal with fancy soldering methods to remove a ship later if i have to could cut the legs on a ship if this if you have multiples and you don't care about it care about the pcb you can snip the legs obviously but i prefer to use an inexpensive new socket so this ship over here if i were to remove that i would put a socket there mm. i think they are uh, getting really corroded now so i think that's helping them snap off Usually, when the socket is fine, but you have some, you need to get under it, and it's fine. They usually don't break this much. This one is all green. It's even showing up green dust. Just taking the ones that stick out that didn't broke, break off first here. one so we don't have to care about this side and we can peel the whole frame now out thankfully 
annoying. There was quite a lot of corrosion there, so stuck. But then one half off. The other half is what's gonna hide most damage, I think. So. So let's see here, there's the trace, and there's a wire there. This trace is not as corroded under here as I figured. It stops somewhere around, is that the ship, so I think, don't think we need to lift the ship for that. But we have a via there, and one there, and those are probably bad, but we can clean that, put a piece of copper wire through that and solder that, so make sure that isn't bad. Uh, otherwise, I think we can leave this in. I would like to remove the 80 connected to figure out what's going on under there. Corrosion makes it pretty difficult to make stuff cooperate because there's nothing but corrosion here apparently. like to use screwdrivers on PCBs but this there are obviously traces on this but not like modern ones so you can kind of work in between and try not to make any marks. It's coming off just a bit stubborn. Reasons. So I wanted to get this off because of the corrosion under here. We can clean this up. Problem with corrosion is so hard to solder because nothing, the tin doesn't melt and so on. Everything is just annoying. Quite the opposite of soldering, say, a new PCB where you got a kit or something where everything just works. Corrosion really makes everything a pain. I think we're gonna, we have this list now, we're gonna check the ISA pin out for the voltage rails, they all go there as far as I can remember. So we can probably continue to check uh, between uh, here and an ISA slot over here. Uh, so make sure we don't have any traces that are broken off. I'm mostly wondering where the negative 12 is goes, if it's in a layer in between or something. And then we need to check 
this one so it, it should go over to here I think we got these here four of these they're usually for the keyboard a80 connector the ding connector so four of those and they should go to he this ship I think usually or I go over here and I can't remember or I go over here this or this they usually is like um what's it nor I think yeah, or um, not maybe an inverter so there's uh, another board I fixed uh, the traces were off they go to an inverter so if the signal in you get nothing out and vice versa so just invert the signal and that is probably then going to here because I think this is a keyboard controller well, it's just yet key so I think that's a keyboard controller so I would expect these lines here, four of them go to here and then over to here. Uh, something like that. So it's got some vinegar, 24%. It's called Etika. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's uh, put it in a syringe here so I can apply some. I'm just gonna put it on the, cro on the corroded areas to neutralize the... It's not acid, acid... Uh, it's called bait acid, but I think it's a base actually. You know, I'm gonna put it here to neutralize this corrosion. Let it sit for 15 20 minutes, I think. It's gonna bubble here. So I might leave the camera on and uh, see how see if we can actually record that happening. So I'm just putting it out here. So let's scrub a little bit, see what happens here. Make sure there could still be some top coating left, so I can't scrub this corrosion away. But I don't think there is; it's just very thick corrosion. You're gonna have to like tin this and wick this later. Get even more corrosion, corrosion away, and once it's it's all taking tin solder, we can do a final soldering of the traces to basically give them a new coating of um, a little metal layer, thick in the copper with some tin, and at the end we can come formal coat them so they are protected even more. But that will be. Well, probably before we saw the back, some big components that might be in the way, so we might cover them up. Want to do that? Also, pretty sure we can figure out this one. Shouldn't be anything wrong with it, but this one over here should come out on the other side over here. So maybe we can get some contact there and here. Who knew? Yeah. 
So there's no break on the big one under there. There shouldn't be because the corrosion ends here. As far as I can tell, so that's good. And there's a third wire here. You see no corrosion really, but I do want to check it anyway. So it should be. Let's see where we are. It's one over here. And I think it goes over to number two. Yes, so number two on that side. Number two goes to here, which goes to here, I think. Yeah, so that is good too. Like I said, while we're at it, here we should really clean up this. Team was battery solder joints here, so you can use them for a 2032. The owner said they wanted that, which makes sense. Most people do. left there from the battery and quite often the legs are still in the hole. Notice people snip them off or break them off. Maybe they even fall off. But I don't think that was the issue here. I'm gonna tin them and scrub them with uh, actually scrub them with, with the wick again with so on, until we see it taking solder everywhere. I suppose you have to be a little bit aggressive here. The copper is usually not that thin because it's like a voltage rail, so it's not like well, it could technically go through it if it's corroded enough, but then you have to pull up to use a wire anyway if it's that bad. So, but you can't solder over it, perhaps, so you kind of had to go at it a bit. So I think that's what we have to do, clean this trace here, tin the trace, just gonna clean out some holes that got filled up while doing that.
and the downside of cleaning away all this corrosion on these old PCBs is like when you're working, you have to work them for a while and with the corrosion you kind of scrape up, off and discolor the PCB but well it's that or corrosion and corrosion isn't good so that's the worst so it's slight but we're gonna get a better hold over there so now I was gonna see it and we're gonna cover it up protect it I mean and we'll cover it up protect it with some conformal coating I should have it. still one can somewhere. Actually, flowing pretty good now. That's nice. From what I read, uh, and this takes about you ho even harden it with a pen, and then or then you should have like two hours in the sun. I usually just let it sit somewhere in a room. Doesn't even have to be in sunlight. And it hardens like a week or two late, it's stone hard. So, let's see if I can remove some excess there just in case I need to ever remove that component. I don't want it to get stuck on the legs. So, that should be it. It seems to work somewhat, but because it pulled out like on everything, you can see the blue stuff over here too. But yeah, but you can quite clear now see where I put most of it. I think should be lighting up blue here. Do that. I don't know how the camera picks up uh, picks it up, but to me it looks blue. So, yeah, and it this hardens it, and then uh, get like silicone now, so you should you have to be careful with it for a while. But as uh, uh, so time goes by, like I said, it gets harder, so you can get it look like almost like transparent ice or water when it's done with a real knife finish. So this is not gonna corrode, like the trace is gonna stay there now. And if the trace is slightly loose, it will stick and so on. So you can do trace repair, like a wire and coating in this and it will stay there. So this is nice like that. And it tends to be like a lacquer, almost like a coat of like oil when you like even cook your food on top, which you can just wipe off, I noticed, with this particular conformal coating. It looks good though. It gives the tin like that melted look, really. It's just kind of nice to. But um, I don't think this is like the green stuff, like Rosma uses, for example. This is like it's. I didn't have much luck with it for like fixing stuff when you like you pin something down because it turns into more like silicone in the beginning. So it just drips, but it gets done hard later, so it's more like a. I'm done kind of product, you know, so to protect your stuff. Probably good for like RC cars and stuff where you might want to coat your servos or something. So, I want to check uh, these now for connectivity here. So there's one. It should be four out of five here. Nothing there. Nothing. That one. That one and that one, and that shouldn't be connected to anything. I think maybe ground, possibly, and that should be ground. This now I'm on the wrong pin. Yeah, five volt is there, just on the wrong pin. Was on the number, was on the number two instead of number three. So five volt is and I say negative five is um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And where is negative 5 and connector? Should be number 4, I think, from that side. Yeah. Negative 5, and then one, two, there should be negative 12. Should be there then. Now we have that. And plus 12, another 2 down. And plus should be. Green. And number three. Yeah. So 
we have the four voltages. Used to neutralize the battery acid. So, and I sit a little while, then we can solder everything back. I think. Where is mine? And this one looks fine. Some cleaning. I'm gonna clean this one before we before we solder it on. Let's make sure it's clean and nice. Put the back on. So I got the new filter cap. I should define this one, I think. We don't know what exactly was there before because it kind of blew up in it. So this will have to do. Is some corrosion over here I don't like. Need to remove that. Sure, it's somewhat straight. I just want to make sure they're not too big and big with excess due to excess tin so removing so that's good enough. <coughs> so I put this back to Uh-huh. 
Uh, next up would be a new socket. So notch goes this way. There's the notch. And the notch there. Where the notch there. And I realized the problem. What we can fix that. This frame has the middle support. Cut that out. Now it should fit. quite common there's the ship hidden under the seamus like that so. So that's the new socket in place. So, let's see here. So the ship will go in there. Obviously, the seamus, and like I said, it seems to do. It's fine. So that will go in there. But I will clean the board a bit first. But already, that part of the board looks much better than before. I think. Need to figure out the seamus though later. Just fixing up some corrosion on the traces here to the CP pins here. Then I think around the CP we're done. So quite important that the CP CPU gets what it needs. I think most of the corrosion damage is now fixed. I'm thinking I should, should clean the board because it's so gross now and I don't want to clean with the seam of better in a tank. I just do, do that before. So let's zoom out here. Zoom out what we have done. So board, like so, so. so. This is the board now. It should work now, I think. We'll find out. It's not done yet though, we need to fix the, this, but that's the last thing, I usually do that once I test the board a bit. So yeah. Took it apart basically and put it together again. I'll to remove corrosion and check that everything is fine. So, funny enough when I took this apart, it seems to have very few actual problems. Usually, when I don't do that, I have a lot of problems I can't see. The, with a lot less corrosion, so it's kind of funny that I had so much corrosion, but nothing seems to have been broken really. Nothing important, at least yet. But we'll find out. There's nothing that says that this board works. As far as I know. So we'll try. So everything is hooked up. I got four stickers of RAM. I got an ISA graphics card and a postcard. Actually, talked to the owner of this board before while I was waiting for it to dry and uh, he said it never posted when he tested it was stone dead so I put a postcard in it too so let's see here everything is hooked up but think power is on so no power is on got postcodes well, that's a fast board to post Gosh, my modern computer posted that fast Check some error, that's to be expected. If want to continue, control, alt, escape or delete, and set up, delete. And keyboard works, so. So yeah, he said it didn't work. The only fault, right, the real fault stuff that I found possibly. The cap was bad, and anyone can see that. Uh, I think the socket for the, for the CMOS was the big issue. Obviously the corrosion, the corrosion itself, 
I was obviously damaging the board here, but uh, I could keep doing it. But there wasn't anything actually broken. It was kind of unusual considering the level of corrosion. So I've seen a lot less corrosion with traces completely gone. So yeah. Oh, it could also have been something with the CPU. I did uh, f drag solder there because it looked kind of bad. So. Anyways, uh, but uh, my vote is on the socket, as, so it's just switching that, uh, replacing that would probably just made it boot, but uh, you do want to remove uh, the battery acid or it's gonna keep eating and destroy everything, so. He wants uh, a 2022 cell, you can use one or two depending on the SEMA, sometimes we have to use two, I usually try the one, but uh, they might not last very long either. Should obviously, like what, what I mean with two is that the CMOS chip, the old ones, can take like up to six volts. Usually, if you read the data sheet, three to six volts, like min max. So, and if you have a diode with that, like with one volt drop, you got like five, maybe 5.6, because the, the batteries can good quality 2032 it tends to be like 3.3 volts when you and unloaded. So I think the easiest way would be to mount this virtually. There are such things, I don't think I have one. And I think I need to, the easiest thing would be to also when I do that use a diode. But anyway, I think we're gonna fabricate something that stands up here so we get this, uh, I'm thinking, like so, so you can slot it in from above. Something like that. I think that's the easiest way. And then we can fit a diode so it doesn't charge the thing. Uh, technically, probably do two of them, uh, but it's gonna be tight of space then. So yeah, I think that's the easiest way to avoid all the components and also get it out. So we basically make it vertical. It's gonna be a little bit flimsy, like so, but it's too bad it doesn't have more than two holes. But yeah, I still think that's the easiest way to solve this problem. So I'm gonna cut this out and then so we can then mount this like so. And then we have to I'm cut this this off here and then we can make like two bent uh, pins so we can so we can solder here and then solder that down there. I think that will be the best way. I made this PCB, so I'm gonna solder this to it, so we can mount it like so over here. So I need to bend some pins. Should do. So nice to solder new PCBs. Not the fucking corroded shit. Put that one there. Can then connect it up. So since that that is plus, so that can go out this way if we connect these make bridge intentionally when you want one you can't get it because you pcb it's kind of annoying how that is bridge when you don't want them and not when you want them so make sure it fits Oh yeah, that should fit like so. Let's tilt this a bit so you get a better idea. Not like so. So I figure it should be easy enough to slot one in here.
So yeah, basically ground and it just goes here and in there and then plus here with a diode so you don't have so it can't take a charge later in from uh, the power supply and there's positive there so yeah shit the IKEA ones because they're really shit like two years lifespan and uh, not even like, three volts barely so I have stuff that complains that they're empty when I put a new one in but if it works with this, these ones, it's gonna work with good ones, like, like, I think I have some good ones. Yeah, my last good ones. That's a good. Put that in like so. And I know those are like two volts. I actually had two laying here somewhere. Can I use that instead of opening a new one? But you know, she had like 2.7 or something, I think. You know, would suspect 2.9. So, what's the before the diode in this one? Aren't all the beta shit then? Maybe it's before diode 325. That's weird. Why are some IKEA batteries shit then? I'm not joking, I was quite literally. Switching around the other day. 299. That's one opening yesterday. This one is slightly used, I think. 306. Mm. And this one is. Yeah, well. We found a good IKEA one after three attempts then. That's good. Be a bit careful now we don't melt it from the other side of the board. See how that lines up, it needs to go over a bit, like so. Slip this so that I don't short against the case. I don't think they would, but why risk it? Now I'm gonna test it without a beta first to so make sure I don't have any voltage in. So I did check now, and uh, there's no voltage coming in on the plus pin here when it's powered on, so we can actually put the battery in and see if we can save the setting for a period of time so i will set date and stuff and leave it off then again for a few hours that will tell me so far the CMOS beta has held a short for a short uh, test period so there are a few caps here i figure we replace them too then this board should be basically brand new so i don't have to have this come back for some weird reason there are only like seven or something caps, so we replace those, I think. So we have our recapped board and we have CMOS battery and we have fixed all the corrosion damage, replaced the socket and some uh, 
capacitors, we drag solder the CPU. Yep. And we also removed and cleaned uh, and fixed the traces under the AT connector. So yeah, I should probably try it again. Can I hook up some disks and stuff, see if we can boot something. So I've hooked it up. I have a, this is just a postcard with four megabytes of RAM. This is 128 kilobytes of L1 cache, and this is a 4, 386 40 megahertz AMD CPU. Uh, an ordinary controller card, so we can have an ID drive. This is my pre prepped Windows 95 for like 486s. It also works with a 386. Uh, so we have serial out here for the mouse, that's the basic we need. Pre configured it, pre tested card. Well, this really want good known card. And here we've got a series loading 5429, it says. So, yeah. Pretty decent card, but it's slow on ISA, but this system isn't fast enough anyway, so should fit well. And oh yeah, here's the CMOS battery mode. And I uh, like the new caps and so on. So, this is completely a serviced board, so we're gonna power it up and uh, boot Windows 95 on it. So you can see the cache here. Okay, now it works. This mouse is such crap. I bought it on eBay for way too much and it sucks so much balls. But yeah, for being a 46 with 4 megs of RAM, I would say this is pretty responsive once the mouse actually works. Uh, with some more RAM, this could actually be usable with Windows 95. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 4 megs of RAM. DOS bench. We could go into DOS and run some uh, Doom benchmark maybe. Let's do a Let's check something. Is it okay? So what's the yeah? Well, it's yeah. Should be faster than a 33 mesh DX, 386 obviously. This is what we we run the more difficult one on our 486s. I'm interested interested to see that rather than the 386 one. Well, this is slow. It's gonna take forever. Well, I think we can ditch that. Maybe some bias tweaks will help. Be cache T. Clock it yeah, four megahertz, yes. Should see the cache here, I think. I think we do because we should have 120k and we got about 39 to 40. What is it? Microseconds or something. And then at 256 it goes up to more than twice that. So what does it say? Cache is 128k, yep. 27.8 megabytes seconds, 27.7 nanoseconds, and I got main memory at 11.7, 89.8 nanoseconds here. So yes, I do have 128k of L1, which is pretty good for that 386, I must say. So yeah, that's the is the. 4 the Megahertz 386 motherboard with 128 kilobytes of cache. Uh, it's fully restored and revived. I was, like I said, um, I think I said, told that the board was dead by the, by the owner. He had tested it, it was dead, so it wasn't just that 
it needed servicing it wasn't even working so that's another board saved and I think it should work well for quite some time now so thank you for watching and have a nice day if you want to follow us you can go to our social media webpage braindrainlan.tk and pick your favorite platform link is in the description you can join us on our discord server we host public lands when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like quake counter strike and much more or you can show off your own retro lan or maybe visit our members private lan parties we have a galleries benchmark channels where you can post images videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more so come and join us and share your retro experience with us thank you for watching and have a nice day